Selectmen are present, the town administrator is present, the recording secretary is present, and Mr. Leo Martel is recording for the citizens who want to view this online later on. Gentlemen, I have some minutes from last minute, from last meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, regular meeting minutes from November 1st, 2018. Second. Any discussion, gentlemen, on the minutes? Yeah, they're not amended. They're not amended. Great job. Wow. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Please. I'm going to. This is the time of the meeting where we open up for public comment. If you have public comment, please state your name clearly. Uh, we have a tape recorder, and uh, if you have any uh, interesting business for the town, uh, Mr. Leo Martell, stop in the back row. Okay. Ken? Nothing. Anything in the back row, Chief? No. Good. Chief? This is Chief? No. <laughs> no. Sorry. Uh, I just have one thing for the board, Chris Rimmelard with the police department. Uh, I met with the on-call engineer uh, yesterday along with Central New Hampshire Regional Planning Commission. Right. And uh, in summary, the meeting was that a roundabout is very doable um, and the engineer is going to draft up a cost estimate, hopefully have it to be next week. This is for a submission to the Central Regional Plan. Correct, for the 10-year plan. Yeah. Excellent. So the meeting went very well. Good. Oh, great. And you're prepared for our next week uh, a public hearing? Chief and I have been working on our materials. Yes, okay. we'll, be, we'll be ready to go. Okay. Uh, butcher block paper or just handouts? We haven't decided yet. Okay. Butcher block paper. Butcher block yeah, paper. Yeah, like that brown tint. Yeah, there you go. Want to return that on? Yeah, we did. Done. Hi. Uh, yes, I do have a couple of things, actually. Uh, Deb Trottier, chair of the uh, Dunbarton School Board. Um, a couple of things. The first thing um, that I'm going to give you guys, and you can make copies. Um, I have just three of them here. We did finally find somebody who was willing to give us an estimate for um, some AV um, in the gym, uh, in the community center. Uh, that's been a hard slog to uh, get anybody who's even interested. Um, but this company has said that they would be interested in doing it. They are still interested. Um, it's, a, it's pretty pricey. Um, that estimate's about $21,000. Um, it will probably be a little bit more because we will have to, I don't think it includes some of the caging that we might need because it is a gymnasium. Um, I wanted to bring it to you guys um, because again, we have the, the, what used to be called the kitchen fund and is now the community center fund. Um, and just as a review for everyone how that works, that fund is set up for the school district to accept the matching funds that the selectmen give us every year, the $1,000 mm -hmm. towards that fund. And a couple of years ago, we had changed it from kitchen fund to community center fund um, to not exceed $10,000 balance in that fund. Um, that fund has about, um, and the way it works with dispersing it is if we, the school board, chooses to disperse it, we would disperse the, say, $2,000, and we would match it from our budget for a $4,000 expenditure. That's sort of how that fund works, just kind of as a reminder. Um, so there's about $5,000 in that fund. Um, the PTO has offered up $8,000. Um, so that kind of tells you how, about where the money is. Um, I know the board is certainly um, willing to discuss splitting it three ways. Everybody chipping in 8,000 comes out to be about 24,000, which gives a little buffer on that $21,000 estimate. Um, that's something we are certainly willing to discuss as we go into our budget process. 
um, I just wanted to bring it forward to you because this, you know, obviously you're going to start talking about your budget as well. So the time frame is just for the next, next budget cycle you want to possibly include? I, I would think so, just with the expenditure being, you know, eight well, to ten thousand dollars each. You know, I, I don't know if that was something that we would want to pull out of unencumbered funds or something like that. So we would be doing it as part of our budget cycle. Okay. Um, is the the way that the board is kind of looking at it right now. So. Yeah, I, think I, would, I just think it would be a good good feature to have there. I know that we've tried at town meeting some other little screens there and a she, little bit, little bit and she's yeah, is that what that is? I don't even know what that it's is. A, it's an AV proposal for a, a complete AV package for the uh, community center. Oh, sound system? Everything. And, and, screen, and TV screens. Okay. It's, it's a nice system. You know, like we're in town meeting, we're trying to explain yeah. things to you. Oh, yeah. We're trying to do it on it's that horrible. overhead. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can't hear anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have a seat. Yeah, so. Bob, any comment? Well, I think we got consensus here that we're in favor of trying to get a put it together to come up with more budget yeah. solutions, the exact numbers that we would want to put into it too. Okay. Okay. You know, so we just need your job. We just need your job. We might have to just make a copy. I think it's all I have is a physical yeah. copy, but I can get it. Let me see if I can get an electronic one. I can probably get it from Owen because Owen has, is the one who collected that information. Okay. So I'm sure he has it electronically. So I'll ask him tomorrow. So you're time. thinking you might as well leave some money in there, not drain it out. You said there's about five in there now. Right. Um, so that that um, I guess that's a discussion that we can have. How much of that fund we would use? I mean, every year, you know, it, it goes up by a thousand dollars. So we can certainly two thousand because we put in a thousand also. Right. Actually, that thousand is your thousand. Oh. And we just match it from our budget. Yeah, they don't match it until they use it. So right. <clears throat> it, it doesn't sit in the fund. So if you use four, we match, match it. You have eight from them, and then eight from the PTO, and then. For. Right. My, my only concern is that it's a large item, dollar item, and right. I think it'd be worthwhile to get to several other quotes if possible, which is challenging. Well, we haven't been able to get anyone else, <clears throat> but I can ask Owen to see if he can find right. someone else. Just as a sanity check. Right. Because, um, yep. because this may be a great company by the things so we spend that oh, much. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of money. Yeah. The so. town has a bid policy. Anything over 10 has to go up and bid. Um, but I know you may not have that right, policy. We, yeah, we don't, but we try. But certainly, if that's something, I, I can have uh, Owen contact yeah. you and see. You know, one bid. one bid is one bid, but it, it just the same check. I know. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Okay. But um, I did want to at least bring it forward that that is looking like about the cost of Great. doing a sound system like that, and is that something I think we might I, all like to? Yeah, I think we, we're definitely interested in helping out there too. Okay. Yeah, well, I think we have consensus. Yeah. Yeah, we've had problems getting kids this summer as well, so we know what you're going through. Yeah, and this one, we've been working on it for two years, and this was like the first really viable bid that we've gotten. Okay. So. Yeah. But um, I will see what we can do to troll the waters and see if we can get a few more bids on that. So. All right. That would be great. Um, I had two other things. Um, as you know, we had um, someone resign from the board, from the school board, and last night uh, we had five great candidates. Um, it was really good, you know, sometimes you don't get any, or just one or two. So we had five, you know, five really good candidates. Uh, we did choose somebody last night, uh, Jeff Moody, has been in town for five years. Um, he's got a second grader, has uh, some background in education. So we're going through the process of, you know, finalizing his appointment. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that, that we had filled that position. Um, and then I just had a quick question. Just I was wondering, um, I brought a couple months ago the information about <coughs> Maybe adjusting the June tax bill is that something you can pursue? Or? It was discussed at length, and um, we like them not to do it at this point. Okay. Uh, because there's a logistics there, there's a few other things there, um, but the things it was discussed at length. This was us, and I'll let Dave talk a little bit. Yeah, we did. We went around and around, and um, uh, we also got some information back from the town about mm -hmm. how they. My own personal thoughts were is after going through your See, meetings, which were pretty mm -hmm. informational, I also got a feeling there that people just wanted it back. And even if it went through the standard process where they got the correction on this tax bill and the spring tax bill will be art artificially reduced and then it will go up in the fall, we decided it was best as a board to let it go through that process even though um, they're going to get two lower bills and then one's going to be much higher. Mm -hmm. um, only for the simple fact that, you know, it was quite a process for us to go through to change that. Um, 
Oh, I imagine it was complicated. To change that, mm -hmm. and after listening to most of the voters in there, I just figured if it went through, um, even though they might not like it next fall, if it goes through that course, um, there would be less people maybe coming back on us afterwards. So I thought it was a good suggestion. And thank you for bringing it forward. But uh, it, absolutely, it was yeah. definitely and, discussed at length. And I did do my due diligence. Oh yeah, no, and it, and it really is just for us as a board. I mean, we were already going to have a lot of a lot of our um, what we're going to be doing this year is discussing this at length. Um, because in turn, you know, when you get your December bill in the fall, and, and it's the, it's going to be high. And I I just want to make sure that that we're giving the same message and if you yeah. if you choose if we choose to not as a town pursue this option that's okay i just want to make sure that we're not saying something that we're, I, we're all saying the same thing yeah. i mean i had somebody call me this fall after they received their bill and asked where is the million dollars i said yeah. was your bill lower than it was and they yeah. said yeah there and is. so they they thought it was going to be much more and i'm like now you're also going to get a lower one in the spring and save some of that money for the fall. Was my yeah. advice to them. And, and people are still coming and asking for their rebates. Yeah, it doesn't come like that. I mean, so, and as much as we try to explain it, and uh, so. But no, I agree that we should all be on the same page. But we did go around and around about okay. how to do that, and uh, we decided and, to let it go. Through. And yeah, we realized completely it's, understandable. This office is going to be on the on the front line when people come in in December next year, and uh, so I I go. Like, oh, the office over here, the tax got this. Yeah. 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 It starts during the day at my office. Okay. So. All right. Anything so, else? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Do you guys have anything for me that um, I can take back to the board? Nope. I just thought the um, uh, I, the elections went well, and we got a good support from the uh, from the janitor there. And uh, I, I, I know the community center worked. I had no problems with that community center. So uh, and the school looks great from the outside. Okay. And the chief, yeah, the chief, uh, this the chief of police was telling me how when the um, when they, they finish the paving in the back, they might work with the school to create a, a drop off, and then people drive around the, the exit. Right. Yeah, that would be a from, lot from safer. a safety standpoint. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I think that was a great suggestion by the chief of police to look at that yeah. instead of having to turn around the back parking lot, just have them go all the way around. And so we just waiting on uh, when we get completion. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it does Thank look you. nice. Thank you. I'll take that back to the board. Living Valley Board of Assessors, Jim. Okay, anything for the... Yes, I just something to bring to your attention. Okay. There's an RSA which provides an optional property tax exemption for solar energy systems, wind systems, and wood heating energy systems. And it's an optional thing. Yeah. Right now we don't tax them. This is an exemption not to be, you know, right. not to be taxed. I kind of think it should be the other way. If it adds value to the property, we should tax it. So I just wanted a heads up on that one. Okay. And as far as our budget goes, we're going to need more in our legal. Do I do that now? No, we're going to do our budget, budget meeting. Okay, great. I'm going to give out some general guide. I'm going, bring, I'm going to bring it back to the board. I'm going to review some of my recommendations internally. Then I'm going to share with the, with everyone else. Okie dokie. Okay. Okay, I'm bringing it back to the board. Gentlemen, you're in receipt of uh, uh, my recommendations. Are you going to I was going to go through them, but if you have any... any you want to do that before that? Yeah, okay. We're going to just want to do something very quick to keep moving on. We'll make one motion uh, separate from uh, the budget. Yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion per RSA 31, colon 95 dash B, Roman numeral 3, paragraph B, to accept a donation from Blue Ribbon Property LLC in the amount of $350 and miscellaneous donations for an amount of $509 for Reese across Dunbar for a total of $859. Super. Uh, discussion, Lena, are you going to receive that money? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? No, great job. Where's the job? Right there. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Spend, a long long day. <laughs> Spend a long day, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we all did. All in favor? Aye. 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 Money's been put away. All right, now we're going to go, if you pull up that sheet, I provided our board members. I was going to share this with the public to give any concerns as I should go down. Uh, I don't want to go through everything, but uh, I'd like to start that, so at least put up the guidance. Yeah, it pretty much covers it. Yeah. We'll talk to the we'll talk to we'll talk to we'll points everybody. Let's see what Dave feels for the day. Oh, I think that's fine. Okay. okay. All right, so those, uh, uh, Department heads and three heads who are here. I'm just going to go by the general guidance for uh, physical guidance for this uh, next calendar year. 
Uh, first of all, pay raises. We're looking, we're looking as a board uh, for an across-the-board pay raise for all employees. We are not considering pay raises for elected officials. We are looking at other alternatives for elected officials. We are considering a lower-cost health plan with higher deductibles and co-pays for our full-time employees. As far as your budgets, please plan your budgets with level services similar to 2018. If you have a capital fund for future, pur for future purchases, you need each department head who's got an overview of that capital fund to review and recommend warrant proposals. You need to defend why you need the item in the future and the reasons for the recommended amount for 2019. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times it's, uh, I go to meetings, it's up or down, and the things, the figures all over the place. Uh, before we go into uh, the town meeting, I'd like to have a clear understanding of what we're talking about, why you need the money, and justification, in other words. Regarding 2018, as we close out the year end, to avoid mixing the 2018 and 2019 funds, that's a it's a it's a pain in the rear end. I'm going to be honest with you for our budgeting people, and so the thing is, uh, uh, we need to have 2018 purchases to be submitted need to be submitted no later than 10 a.m. on December 28th. Thing is, a lot of times you pay by credit cards. If you pay by credit cards, you need to at least communicate by that date and time the amount of money spent and submit copies of all orders depicting total cost to include shipping if possible. Because you know, we do a lot of things on Amazon and, and other outside internet sources. But at least print up a uh, copy of the receipt so that we can keep accounting of it. I want to make sure 2018 funds get, uh, get put into 2018. Because we may not get the bill to 2019 because of credit card cycling, but I don't want to uh, have that nightmare we have every year. Now, no purchases will be made after December 28th. None. In other words, if you've got to buy pencils and paper, if you don't make it by 28th December, don't buy it. Remember that non-routine items will require, quote, supporting this, uh, your decision process. If you want to buy something for $1,000, remember, we have a bidding process. And we have a process you have to go through. Common sense. You've got to show a couple quotes to justify your position. And I say that as a reminder. We all know that. Now, after December 28th, there's always that emergency purchase. Emergency purchases will be authorized. The only thing I need is uh, I know want close communication and coordination with the town administrator prior to year end so she can account for those dollars. And I'm going to open up the questions from the department chairs uh, and committee chairs if they have any questions on that. Am I pretty clear? Yes, go ahead, Chief. Yeah, some items only have one supplier. <clears throat> And so be it. That's totally I'm looking at something right now. There's only one company that builds this, that makes this product, and it's over a thousand dollars. So there's no way I'm going to be able to. Get and it. totally, totally, uh, totally understood. And so I have no issue with that at all. Okay. And things I just want to use the accounting practices and the procedures we've been using all the time, every year, and throughout the year. That's all I'm asking. And it's just time. If you do order it on, you know, things. I was talking with the fire chief. I was talking with the police chief. And they like to keep their powder dry, and I respect that because they don't want to run out of money in October and find out they have to buy something in December. And so they always keep some money in reserve uh, so they don't have that quote unquote emergency, no money in the budget, and they have to buy something. But December is the money, the time you, if there's extra money, you buy those you want, you want, but not actually needed right now, but you want to spend that money to buy something the department needs. I understand that. That's why we extended, I extended it to December 28th this year. But just get those purchases in to our admin side so we can account for them with this year's money. Questions again? Okay. So that's, that's the budget guidance for this year. Uh, later on this evening, we're going to be discussing raises, percent, uh, raises for our employees. We're going to be discussing the health care plan uh, at detail among the selectmen. We are trying to make some changes which will lower costs for employees, but it's a little bit of cost shifting too because you can stay healthy at the same time if you're ill. Uh, you have to, you're going to have co-pays and deductibles similar to anyone else in, in this industry of public service. Hearing no questions, I'll move on. Okay. If you just wanted to come here for that, I'm not going to. I'm not going to ask you to stay for the entire meeting because we get boring sometimes. If you wanted to part at this point, go for it. 
Are we going to have the individual departments? Yeah, so the thing is, uh, we're going to, Lean will coordinate with individual departments uh, between now and the year end to come up with uh, presentations so we can uh, review your proposals and support you as needed. Can I just touch on that just briefly? Please. Uh, so I put together a um, calendar of meetings for the board uh, to be aware of for the number of meetings that we have available uh, beginning next Thursday through the end of the year, we have seven board meetings and then um, tentatively five more in January. I'm hoping that with the way we've gone through the process the past few years, that we can all find um, a time in the, in the next few weeks rather than later to schedule a, um, an appointment with the selectmen. My budget is ready to roll, so you'll probably see that in your mail baskets, a budget worksheet for you to work with, and if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to me and I would be glad to work with them on it with that. I'm getting better at this budget and stuff. I understand it now. Yay. Is there anybody like Mary that has an outstanding item that they think might raise in their budget that they want to make us aware of early on? If not, be prepared to talk about it when you come and chat with us uh, when we read so you can wait till you come back, Mary, but does anybody else have anything big that they're thinking about or Okay. Thank you. Now we'll uh, take a one minute re uh, recess so we can, if you want to leave, a late, we won't make a disturbance. So chill out for one minute. And I want to leave a lunch. <laughs> 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 no, I'll go to see anything. Uh, yeah. I did. I did. I'll stay. Okay. Let's try this. I'll be in touch with you. Next week, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll be next talk about See you Sunday, right? Yep. You have a sheet you want us to go to, Bob? Or? I know that I didn't bring. Okay, we had it last week. Yeah, yeah you, you saw it last week. Okay. So, I'm not saying. That's what it does make a difference, anyways. We're looking, at the, we're looking at the pay raise this year. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't even undermine the employees here for what they receive over at the school at the same time. But. And I want to correct that we don't use CPI. We talked about the CPI and how it's constructed. And the COLA is different because the COLA uses the, um, um, it uses part of the CPI, but it uses the increases the, uh, uh, so, so I have a senior moment here. Uh, but it's made up of two parts. One's the inflation rate for the COLA. And that's why you see the COLA being like for people receiving Social Security this year, they'll get 2.8. Last year, they got more because it's a combination of numbers. What we're using is the Department of Labor's average weekly wage increase that they project for the year. And it's coming in a little under 2%, so we decided that we were going to go with 2%, which mirrors what they do over at the school for their employees. So, uh, I guess I'd make a motion that... Well, uh, before you make a motion, did we want to try and talk about the health insurance issue? No, that's separate from... I know it's separate. Yeah. But one of my thoughts was, is uh, if you guys are going to change the health insurance plan, are you thinking about doing that? Maybe we consider giving a little less raise and leaving it alone. Um, well, I, well, that's a whole different discussion altogether, and, uh, and uh, you'd be surprised, but it probably would cost less to have almost the same plan. And I'll explain it when we get to health care, unless you want to do health care first. Um, that was my only thought when I was coming in here tonight. I was thinking that, you know, um, if we left our plan the way it was, there's an increase, obviously, to the town. We saw that last week when we reviewed it. Yeah, well, the, and the, uh, we've gone through this with other things where we're spending more to get the same thing, and that's 
If you want to do the health care, I don't mind doing that first. Cause well, I just thought we might adjust this up or down depending on what we do with health care. So that's what my thought was. So. Huh. I think this can. I think the pay raise can stand by itself without without impact. I, I, I don't think we have a raise at all. Upper or lower. I think we have a process for looking at pay raise by itself. I think it can be kept separate. Can I put one of these in all your basket or just the general basket? General basket. Okay. I think is that what we're looking for? Is the pay raise or? No, I'm looking for. I've got. What the hell here it is? I got my notes from what she told us last week, and I actually went online and did a little. So this isn't as bad as it seems. Okay. Um, so I don't know which one you want to do. You want to table a discussion on pay raise and we can come back to it and move on the house. Yeah, I think just so we can. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, uh, just I, in case one affects the other. All right. I, I can. I can. I'll move the move the table for the time being. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Sh do you want this one, Dave? I know you have well, a summary. You have this one here, right? Just All a in favor of tabling the pay raise? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. The table to sit pay raise until later in the meeting. All right, let's, let's go on to health care then. I don't know what you guys have done with it to look at it, but... Well, I thought we had the numbers pretty well lined up last week, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're mirroring this. Mm -hmm. Which is what Bob's going to be reading off of. I don't know if you need to look at that as a whole. Yeah, I guess if you have another one there. Yeah. <coughs> I got mine with my notes, but I use this to go online because the state has a site that gives you a network of sole source. Uh, The sole source for uh, whether you go for MRIs, CAT scan. I mean, they they got it quite uh, mixed, and uh, I'm sure that Health Trust is probably using that same list. It's a, a large number. So, uh, I if you went, the only thing I could see changing would have been the copays, but if you went with the one that, because uh, she said it's becoming one of their most popular. The first one was the most popular, but this one here is the ABSOS 2040. That's the fourth one over. Yeah. And if you look at the network that they have, the sole source of services, and they have a large network, and she said it, it's becoming one of the most popular because you can avoid the deductible by using a sole source rather than getting directed. So unless you don't want to put in the effort into where you're going to go, and at the same time, you do receive some kind of monies for the different procedures that you're going through by using that. So the only thing that changes is the deductible, and, and the, if, uh, not the deductible, the copay, the deductible only if you don't want to look for a sole source of services. And the hospitals don't like the idea of, and they, we should have asked, should, she could have mentioned that with Health Trust. <coughs> hospitals don't like sole source of services because they like to direct you to where you're going mm -hmm. and they control those dollars. And that's why that's out there, and that's why they pay you the bonus for going to the sole sources. The one thing, if, I mean, this is what I, I would recommend, this is my recommendation, but if they do, if we do this, I would expect that they would come in and educate the people as to how this works. Absolutely. Because yeah. they would save, your, your number one is everybody saves, the town does, so does the person. Because mm -hmm. if you look at, they're paying 20%. Yeah. And it's a, hundred dollars a month lower. It's a, more than that, I think. More than that. Yeah, it's the uh, seven seventy-seven, and the other one is yeah. So it's a hundred and he's a hundred and fifty some odd dollars a month. See, that's that's where the plan gets lowered. Um, it's, the beauty of this, you stay healthy, you're going to pay less. And if you, comparing this plan to any other plan. 
the SOS providers, uh, by using those, yeah, the SOS providers, you don't even have to pay your deductible, and that's how it covers, as Bob said, labs, x-rays, and all the scans you might need for diagnostic purposes. So it doesn't impact your copay at all. And those are the, those are the heavy copays that you'd be, uh, you'd eat up your copay completely. And that's what you're alerting to, Bob, correct? Right, and the other thing, too, is I noticed that this one here has unlimited on chiropractic, not that everybody needs that. <coughs> <clears throat> and this is one of the few that has the, uh, uh, what the heck is that one, acupuncture. Okay. It's not available on some of the other plans. This one has it. In and I have to say that only because I've seen someone that's used acupuncture, I guess it does work, except I don't care for the needles. But. Well, <clears throat> yeah, the only thing I don't like, Bob, is we're taking the... We're in this Access Blue New England HMO now, is our current plan, and we're making a standard deductible from zero to a thousand dollars per employee that's on it, and a family is three thousand. And then when you go look at your maximum amount of power pocket, it's five thousand or ten thousand instead of three thousand or six thousand. So, and that's your copays, and that's your prescriptions, and that's everything else, but uh, again, I don't see a problem because they have a large network of sole source, source uh, providers and, it's, and so you can avoid the deductible. And she said that last week, well, you know, most, and I think that's why it's becoming popular. And they save a lot because you're using that sole source. That's why they want you to go that direction. Because they save a bundle and they pay you a percentage back, you know, so I think, what was it, the MRI? I don't have it in front of me because that charts at home. Yeah. The MRI paid you at 75 or $80 or was that 100 Well, like there was a, a definitely a, a big range. You're looking at sole source that would range between 200 and 350 for uh, service at the sole source. And then if you went to through your regular primary care, it could range anywhere from 400 and something up to $1,000, depending on whether you did it at the hospital or went to right. a special uh, practice. No, well, my <coughs> point is the rebate that they're giving back, I forgot, I think it's the MRI was one of the higher ones that they rebated you on. Okay. How often do you use that? And I'm just using that as an yeah, example. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, but those are the regular. But they have everything. They have uh, they, uh, that network has a lot <laughs> of places. That, even your blood blood work, you know. So, Bob, are you submitting that that would be our sole so our sole plan for would be the the uh, that fourth one? That's right. That's <laughs> the one that I had looked at and studied. Because I looked at the others, and uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between the first two. The, uh, in cost. Right. <clears throat> I, I like that. I think it's a, I'm a firm believer that um, uh, having some skin in the game rather than, uh, um, is important. I think the industry is going across, all industries are going across. They have copays, they have uh, deductibles. That's the way the healthcare is moving. Um, one thing I was considering, Dave, I'm going to throw it out to you that if, if that fourth, if that last item becomes a standard plan, we could also offer the standard plan A, but the employee would be responsible for the cost difference. And so we could still offer that, but they would have to pay the difference of, instead of a uh, cost of it'd be seven seventeen, the difference that would be passed on to the employee if they wanted to maintain that plan. And Bob, we had talked about this one other time before. Um, nothing to do with um, changing our plans, but. Normally when you look to go work at a municipality, you understand that your pay might be a little lower, but your benefits should, are generally kind of outweigh that a little bit. I'm a little worried that if we go to this plan, our benefit package might not look quite as good to some other, as some other towns, and we might, we well, might uh, end up losing some people to it. I don't know, because uh, as... Uh, the woman said last week, this is becoming, this is also becoming one of the more popular plans. Mm -hmm. Everybody's shifting, and the reason they're shifting is, as you make changes to health care, 
we're going back to double digit increases. Yeah. You know, it was down to five and six percent. Uh, Harvard Pilgrim last year only went up, I think, six percent on their insurance. I know that because that's what my wife has. That's what that we was had a change. Last year. And now you're going back to double digits. So you're looking at double this year, and because of the uh, they were able to make savings, they were able to keep it at ten percent or. 12%, it was, it was it was that number, but it would have been around 16. And next year, oh, last year you're talking about was a 6%. this 6% decrease, decrease last, last year. year. No, no, not last year. This year, this year they kept the number. It it's 10.5%, I think. Right? Yeah, it, but it would have been around 16%, and they came up with savings that reduced that number. Next year you're going to see that number go up because we've taken and allowed people that are healthy and told them you don't have to get insurance. So that's going to be an impact. And we have a captured audience. So what it is that they charge us is what it is that they charge us. So we have to look for flexibility as to where we move in a plan. Right. Well, let's hear from some people that are on the plan and in the crowd here and say, we don't use it, right? You take the stipend. Yeah. yeah, so you take the stipend. So I'm the only one that would be affected that's here. She's on the plan. No, no. they stipend. Stipend. Yeah. We're going to continue to stipend. With that, yeah, I was going to say, if you reduce some what you're paying out for insurance, the, the stipend, stipend may be reduced as well, right? Yeah, because it's, it's based upon the 50% uh, of the single payer. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not on the insurance line. But you have one of your but employees. Pete is, and my employee, my worker, Pete is, and he takes a stipend as well. So I think this touches on what Dave's talking about when he let off that. Yeah, we might give them somebody a two percent raise, and we're taking three percent away from uh, the cost of insurance, no matter how it goes. Right. So I think that's key. D Dave's comment was key because that upsets workers because it's like yeah, they gave me a raise, but then they took it out of my other pocket, yeah. and I actually I lost money. I mean, I think you got to remember one thing, Bob. These people that come and talk to you, they're salesmen. That gal came here. Her business is sales. They sell the stuff. They don't use it. They sell you the plan. And there's benefits to But that. they have no concern as to which one. Oh, no, no. But they, you know, they, it's a sales, a lot of it's sales. And while, while we talk about, we pay a certain amount here, and the others are benefits, they are benefits. And yep. the, the amount of the benefit you receive is, is controlled by however we purchase those benefits. So yeah. I, I understand the ones that take the stipend yeah. are going to take a hit. Yeah. But the ones that take the health insurance have a benefit. So Yeah, but listen to what Dave said. I don't know anything about this. I haven't read into it. I know quite a bit about it dealing with my wife because she has insurance through the school and she negotiates for the negotiating committee for the contracts and all that. So I'm quite familiar with how the insurance thing works. But like Dave said, if you have a higher deductible um, and you pay more co-payments, yeah, you might be paying $150 less a month, but you're going to eat that up in your co-payments. Right. And, that's and, I, and I understand your point because if people take an interest in it, they might think twice before they go, where they might just go to the doctor and say, hey, listen, it's all paid for. It doesn't cost me anything. If they got to reach in their pocket sometimes. It's a, have a there, and it has a bearing on it. It's everybody. a little skin of the game. Can, yeah. I, can I just input since yeah. I'm on the plan? Sure. Yeah. Um, I've been very fortunate to work for the town for the last 14 years. Um, my only concern is that there are so few of the employees that are benefiting from the plan itself. Uh, I'm concerned that a lot of us have been working together for many of these years, and we're all getting to that age where we're going to need more medical care, and this is why you look for and are content or try to be content with the position that you have, just like uh, people are aware, it's not the highest paying job, but there are other benefits that keep you in that position, and then when you have longevity in your staff, it's, it's a plus all around. And I'm just concerned that Every employee that's benefiting from the health insurance is aging, and that we will see whether it's cancer, whether it's you know indigestion, or whether it's other things. There will be a lot more visits, whether we want to or not, and the copay that is going to be introduced 
or the copay changes by five dollars unless you go to a specialist. Right. It goes to forty. Yeah. That's the only time it goes to forty. Yeah. And if you're if you're not concerned and you just want to go in whatever direction you're mm -hmm. pushed by your doctor mm -hmm. or your surgeon or whatever, mm -hmm. and you don't look for sole source, yeah. then you're going to pay top dollar, right. which means the insurance is going to keep increasing. Not unless you have that same education for Plan D as you do for Plan A to emphasize to the employees on the plan that it's important that you understand that you yourself on that plan can save your increases from going up if you practice the same experience for any one of these. Because you actually shop services for plan I did. A. I, yes. just, I just got $75 in the mail this right. week. So it's because I did the shop service. But it's educating the person, to, even on plan A, B, C, or D, and that I, they, they need to do their due diligence, put their skin in the game. Yeah, and see, <clears throat> so you just answered my question. Mm -hmm. So we're paying top dollar mm -hmm. for, you do, for you to do the same thing that you do with number four. Correct. And so you get, yeah. rather than you should, in other words, what, what? Bob is saying is you're going to pay a lower monthly premium yeah. and you're going to be able to do this just shopping around yeah. and you, yeah. it doesn't even apply to your deductible. All the specialty tests. But when you get older, like if you do use major medical, those deductibles and those, well, that's to me, that's those what, are going to be there. Those are cost shifting and the thing is that most of it's going to be is as $1,000 per person, standard deductible, and 3000 for, for family. family. If you don't look around. That's deductible. It's not maximum out of pocket. Right, maximum out of pocket is the bottom. Yes. So, and that's you know, a combination. I just want to be careful before we take this away from employees because you're never going to go from that back up to this. Oh, you. It can change every year. It can, it can change, change every year. It can year. change every year, but most boards are not going to spend yeah. more money. I'm not going to tell you that right now. So I want to be careful to take some up, and that's why. When I said it affects pay raises, if this, if I was on this plan, I'd rather take no raise this year and keep that medical plan the we same. We did that about three or four years ago. We at, opted to not. At my age, raise. like Lane was saying, yeah. if I was 20, I'd say, give me the cheaper one. Give me the money back in my paycheck. But at this age, I would um, opt for the better plan. Okay. I'm trying to understand that. You don't want to do anything but have the bigger plan so you go wherever they direct you to go or you take some of your own initiative, you use the other plan and you shop to get the lower price for MRIs or whatever. I'm using that or CAT scans or But you can you shop it on this one too, Bob. Right, but you're in a hospital and I'm saying, I'm going to be a typical person. You need an MRI. I'm in a hospital. My doctor said go to an MRI. It doesn't cost me a dime. I don't do it right here. And the hospitals want That's you That's not true because they, they have, to they have a lot like 80 20. Now. They have money coming out of their check every week. Oh, I write you that. Yeah. So there is a 20% cost of either plan that's for the well, majority, well, not all right, of them. But what I'm saying, the, the under the gold plan, I'm calling it, call, mm -hmm. yeah. there is, you, you pay zero, it's like whatever whatever they charge at the hospital is what you're going to get. You still want to educate your, your employees, but I, from a week-to-week -week basis, there is $177.94 coming out of two single plans and 355 Dollars and eighty-seven coming out of a two-person plan a month. I think you have two types of you have type of people that will have the time to shop it, and whether they're in Plan A or current plan or Plan D, they're going to shop it. And then you have another type of person that's never going to shop it. Regardless. That's if regardless. they're not educated. I only became educated right. two months ago when I went. But to even it. some people educated yeah. with it don't want to spend the time yeah. to do it. Yeah. So. It, is, yeah. it is an effort to do it. Right? Yeah. But I just wanted to make sure because. Before we change the plan, I don't think the plan is ever going to go back up to that plan. And uh, we are going to be changing what we give to the town employees. To me, it's a, I agree with you, Dave. It's a little cost shifting. Um, again, the incentive is you stay healthy, you're going to, have no, you're going to save money. If you're, you know, there's all sorts of uh, other incentives that they have in there. Just going to health classes, you're going to get rebates and all that kind of stuff back too. So I don't think any of our employees really took took advantage of that last year. And I, one thing I like to do is have them come back in, explain those uh, those cash incentives, which where, which are just sitting on the table, ready to be plucked up. We had a um, six percent decrease last year on this plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this year, there's a 10.5% increase or whatever it ends up being. I think she gave us the exact number last week. But 
Um, looking at the dollar amount, I don't know if it's enough to change plans in my mind, but I mean, well, I'm only one member out of the gallery. I just, I just want what we should think about it because I see there's a decrease to go to this plan of $8,900, and there's an increase if we stay in the current plan of $14,453. So, comes out to $23,000, almost $23,000 difference. Easy to study. $23,000 if you add <clears throat> what this increase would have been in the savings now. Correct. <clears throat> And you're not asking them to do anything different from plan A to plan D, as far as I'm concerned. Except for having a higher standard deductible. And yeah, but it goes up, it's it's $20 deductible, it's $40 if you order a specialist. So you're talking about $5. No, Bob, you're looking at co-pays, you're not looking at deductible. Oh, no, no, I understand, yeah, your deductible, deductible. is 1000 but yeah, that's yeah. if you don't want to do anything except go to the doctor and I got to tell you if it's life or death I don't have a problem pulling a thousand bucks out of my pocket well I'm just saying if you go to the hospital on this plan right here your deductible is zero if you get out of the hospital your deductible is a thousand here and three thousand here normally when you go to a higher deductible um, companies institute health savings plans so that employees can get prepared to pay that higher deductible when they come into that situation. HSA account. Right. Yes. Yep. So anybody, any company that I've worked for that goes to these plans there, they've instituted those health savings plans and then you have that money sitting there. So you know But that's not that's not all the case with municipality. I'll say if you check with other towns, we do better with the longevity pay. We do better with a lot of the hourly pay been around us, mm -hmm. S same size communities. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, you know, at some point in time, you have to get grasp the one thing you can control, which is health care. I, I think health care is going up. I don't think we're, we're going to be going down. I think, um, I think at this point, cost sharing with, with our employees, um, Mm -hmm. is a good idea. I think of all the plans, D is the one that's probably less impact to the employees. And so, Bob, I'm going to go on the record that I'm, uh, and Dave, I'm, I'm in favor of D as it stands. Because yeah, I looked at C, and this, you know, uh, if you're comparing there was no A, I mean, A to D, you know, you're, all, you're actually better off with the D plan. Right. And the other plans they mentioned on the back, the high deductible plans, those were just off. I, I had no problem dismissing those completely. Yep. Can I just make one comment, Mike? Go ahead. You mentioned that none of your employees took advantage of, of getting um, reimbursements or checks. Anytime I had free time, I was involved okay. in that. Okay. So I would beg okay. to differ that your employees did not take advantage of getting okay. any Well, then I stand corrected then. But I think we have to, um, I think whatever we do, we still have to um, call the health trust back in. And I think it's, uh, I All think you have to do is say which plan you want. And then no, but have them come in and, and educate our employees on the One plan way or another, I would insist on it. Yeah. Because I yeah. learned at the health trust seminar that I went how important it was for me to shop around. I and I it, didn't know it before. And shame on us, we don't have an HR person. And, and, be, and I understand I that, Lee, and you're a person that might have the time to shop it or the... Or the I don't. Are you kidding me? The hours I to do it. But a lot of people don't want but to I, shop. But I think we should offer the, offer the, the seminars on our nickel. Absolutely. No, it's free. They yeah. would come in. No, but I say on our nickel, it's paid time for the police to come in. It's not a big deal, though, because if they come in, they'll tell you they have a website. They're offering you the same thing you can get through the state. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that there's mirrors the state. And I got to tell you, it's, it has quite a few different services. Well, you, and you oh, yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, I can be as phone, far as blood work. I have the Fitbit here, and I've already right. shopped for those. I have another department chair. Do, do any of those plans have a concierge service to help you? help you shop around because you go into this course yes. you don't know anything about it. Well right? that's the whole purpose of being educated and I myself was educated at the seminar and I thought well I have 
to act, put my HR hat on and get those employees in here to educate them that there is a benefit here for them to take advantage of but you, with any one of these plans. Well, that being said, does, for sure. does the plan have the service of the hospital? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. By the phone, internet. Um, I, education is key, and I think yeah. as, uh, as we change the plan, yeah, sure, we're, we're lowering the deductible and we're sh shoving more cost shifting to the employee, but there's savings to be had, but they don't take advantage of them unless you have knowledge of them. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's key to anyone on our plan, they should at least have the knowledge of how to maneuver <coughs> and navigate the plan and what resources are there to help you through the plan. Like you said, the, concierge. The, the issue is you, your employees are really focused on working and not so much on what the health plan does. They don't, they don't use it except when they when they really need it. Yeah. So it isn't, it isn't a focus, it isn't something that they're really tuned right. into. So if, if there's a service of help to go to, to, to choose and make these decisions and oh, find sure. these resources sure they would help that, they, that they don't know anything about or they're not familiar with, it, that, that's really, uh, yeah. that, would, that would be a big benefit. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make, make that happen. Great. One of the things, too, is that if we find that this isn't really working, we can make a change. But I, I would think that, I you know, I, I, would, I, I would imagine that this is probably going to be the same thing yeah. for most of the employees. Yeah, so and the other big factor between last year and this year is we had nine employees. We now up to ten. So the fact that we're saving with that tenth person coming on board choosing the stipend, there's a $5,000 increase there that is covered in that same budget line that the board is eating, I guess I would say. So as the town grows, there are going to be increases that you can't avoid. Yeah, the real increase is only $9,000 on the insurance itself. Yeah. Giving you that percentage. Bob, you want to make a proposal then? So I would I would make uh, uh, yeah I guess I'd make the proposal that uh, that we make a motion. motion that we adopt uh, and that's A B S O S O S to yep. twenty forty yep. and that's because I guess the twenty and forty are the co pays. I would second that, and I would open up for discussion. And Bob, I like your idea. If it if it's uh, if that turns out to be a total disaster, a, a really problem for our employees, we can readdress it in the following year. I I like that because this is we're only, we choose them every year, so it can always be uh, readdressed the following year. But I'd say we give it a try. And I, I like the idea uh, what Chief said about uh, making sure we have the uh, appropriate resources identified and education services for employees as we implement the change. I think that's only fair. So, any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? One. Opposed. Opposed, okay. I'll pass. All right, as a corollary. Go back to the other one. No, I'm still on that. Oh, you are? Oh, you were done. No, on I made a copy for everybody on page 18 of our personnel plan. Um, oh. so let me pull that out. There we go. I like to um, bring up for discussion at this point. Uh, at healthcare, we have basically three categories of how employees are charged rates for our healthcare, and I like to discuss those uh, rates and the things I, I'm considering. What I like to consider is uh, elimination of any grandfathering uh, that th those dates did stipulate, and have one rate of 80/20 across the board for all employees. And it affects three employees, as I recall, the grandfather. I got to name them by name, but I think it's uh, But I just like to uh, address that. Does anybody fall under the two seventeen two thousand five before? Yep. Yeah. If you look at the plan. 
Discuss it first, and then we will I'll make a motion, and we discuss it after my motion. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion that all full-time employees uh, will be entitled to health care benefits with 80% of premiums paid by the town for the employee and employee spouse independence. The remaining 20% of premiums are to be paid by the employee. That's the change I'd like to make to personal plan, eliminating any grandfathering of uh, anything before 2005 and 2008. Those two paragraphs above it. So I'm, I'm rewriting the last paragraph. Full, all full-time employees will be entitled to health, care benefit, health insurance benefits with 80% of the premiums to be paid by the town for the employee and the employee's spouse independence. The remaining 20% of premiums to be paid by the employee. When are you talking to making this effective? Cause January 1st with this new plan. I'll second it so we can get the discussion. Now we can discuss it, gentlemen. Um, have you looked at how much savings it would actually give you with just free employees using that? Over six thousand dollars. Um, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that I'm not in favor of it this year, especially only because we just changed their health insurance plan for this coming year. And uh, I think two hits in the same direction um, wouldn't be a wise thing to do. But um, I understand where you're coming from, and I don't know any company that has stipulations to employees on their hire date um, as far as how they're doing their coverage, whether it's full time or I mean 100 percent or 80 percent. Normally, a plan is a plan that's just across the right. entire company. Uh, I think. It, I agree somewhat with you today, but the thing is, when this was probably implemented, health this is 2005-ish, 2008-ish, health care was much lower than it is today. And uh, it's to me, it's health care is never going down. I think it's going to continually go up. And uh, yeah, it's nice to promise that, okay, you were with us for a while, we're going to always cover your health care benefits no matter what it costs. I mean, it's like, I was, I'm going to make an analogy, and people don't like analogies. I'm in the military. I got free health care for life. You know, I have to say bull crap because I don't get free health care for life. Every year I get nailed. My prescriptions go up, my co-pays go up. Regardless, I think it's, and there's nothing free in this world. And um, I, I think it's, uh, I think the town erred back then thinking that no problem, there's only a few employees, we can cover them for life. But with the way the health care industry is going, uh, even, even for me, they realize that um, cost it's a cost increase, and they just pass it on to me as a federal retiree. And um, I think the town bit off more than they could chew, not knowing the future. And the intentions were good, but they didn't realize how much it could cost down the road. Now, uh, you do realize by implementing the plan that we just did, last year we had a 6% deduction in our health care costs. Um, this year we've already now going to have it decrease because of the plan we just chose. Correct. Do you think it's need to do that this year? I just think we have to level the playing field now and stop and adjust, stop a wrong before it continues down the road. Because the, the, as long as the gap keeps growing of those people who have to pay and those 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 hundred percent golden parachute coverage, if the gap's going to be continuing and it's going to be a harder hit five years from now or two years from now, even one year from now. I think it's. In other words, at this point, you got to make the decision to make a tough decision and live with it, and we can go forward with that. Next year, it's going to be even tougher because the gap between it's going to cost even more to those employees next year. It's not going to get any cheaper. Bob, do you want to chime in? Yeah, I'm looking at. 
That's a family thing. Can we run some numbers and table this and look at this next week? It doesn't have to be done tonight. Correct? No, correct. Yeah, and we already did the other part of the plan tonight, so. Yeah, and that's the most important right now, but I'd like to I'd like to do some numbers before. Okay. Uh, I'm in favor of tabling it. And uh, Lee, could you help us with the numbers exactly? You have the spreadsheets in front of you, just a matter of putting them together. Yep, I'm already uh, looking at it. And if you could get out before the meeting next week on email, so they, uh, we, can have, we can have knowledge before the So meeting. you want to see what the 20% will be out of the employee's pocket that's now covered 100%? Correct. Under the D plan? Under the D plan. Yep. I'm, I have no problem with that. Yeah. So we'll table it for now. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now, Dave, we'll go back to the pay raise. And, and I'm still going to recommend I'll make a motion that we give a 2% pay raise. And for the record, that's rounded up, correct, Bob? Yeah, because it would have been a little less than 2 Actually, raises have been flat this year, if you read in the monitor. Uh, <clears throat> okay. When you're looking it up, and they showed you that, you saw that schedule, the most that would go up by the end of the year is like 1.9 maybe at the most. Uh, so we're probably looking at about a 2% so that at least the guys can keep up with inflation. We did check with the school, by the way, to try and keep the town <coughs> somewhat on the same page and they had a 2% pay raise. For a non-union non contract. Right, non-contractual. Yeah. Well, I think it's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, Bob, I think your 2% is a good idea. I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll second their motion. We did 2% last year, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm good with the 2%. And, uh, and having uh, no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And now we wanted to address the elected officials because trying to figure a way of how we can compensate someone and everybody knowing what they're getting when they go into that position. You follow me, Dave? I do. I you just, know, uh, I, I'd like to, I don't know if we do it at time of election, set a pay, uh, an increase in the pay rate. I don't know. The only, the only thing is, uh, you know, some of those elected officials are there for, for many, many years, and that, what are they, three years, a lot of them. So, <clears throat> so the thing is, I, you know, I looked at it, Bob. I like your idea. So in other words, you, you would actually um, say, a road agents coming up this year for election. I'm, I'm sorry to use it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, <laughs> but I think it's uh, <laughs> no problem. Okay, <laughs> but I think it's if you come up for, I think it's but that year we're going to say, well, his, his. The rate of pay for the road agent, not personally, the pay rate of pay for the road agent will be set that year, and so whoever's elected will get that pay for the for that term, and it will next be reviewed when that when your position comes up for election again. And I think that's a good way of doing it. instead of doing it piecemeal every couple of, every year. Now last year you were all on board defending elected officials as well as regular. Well, I was defending. You were wanting to do a, you were doing cherry picking as far as which. Um, we can't cherry pick which town official, elect official gets a pay raise. Well, we were just talking last year about the selectmen. Right. And, and, the, select, not have and, and the thing is, I'll give an example. The problem we'll come back to would be the selectmen. Well, the selectmen are voted, uh, we have all various terms. <coughs> so I can't say you get paid less than Bob. Because Bob's much, I mean, I mean, he's worth much more than you. <laughs> so, but the thing is, to do it fairly. I don't know, you're going to have to ask the town employees okay. now. But to do it fairly, <laughs> to do it fairly, I, I'd say the, 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 select, the selectmen will be reviewed every three years, as, a, as an example. In other words, our pay raise, we won't touch our, our pay, and it'll be reviewed every three years. And any pay raise we make with any elected official would go before the... Uh, you, you guys are, s are staggered, though. For right, yeah. so one, in other words, every three years, regardless of where you are in your term, your, the pay raise for the um, um, the one running no for all of them would be reviewed every three years regardless and then because we, we, we have a group of three with staggered terms oh. and say the uh, road agent would be every three years correct yes and so once every three years we'd be reviewing his pay raise and so it would be based upon the term of the elected official is there anyone was, running this year no um, really? I don't know can I have a question? Uh, I guess school board, school board member, but go ahead. Yeah, how, how many 
elected officials either. That this is the facts. Yeah. <coughs> Linda, you, yeah. Us, a, you, a select on, people. It's yeah. on here. It's right here. Right I, I, I no, lost track of how many. Oh, uh, one is a pain. What is a pain? Tax collected in Treasurer. Pain is 14. Oh, is there that many that would three, would four. affect it by a pay? <laughs> oh. Well, some of it's minimal amount of money. I mean. Yes. What, okay, which, so, yeah. No, but, well, really I would just what I'm thinking is, is it worth all this aggravation? Well, the thing is, um, every every year, I mean, I, why do we have to do it every year? I mean, well, I would think I don't I don't do the job because I'm thinking I'm going to get a raise every year. Exactly. But I'm and I'd be fine with that. But I, I'm thinking, why not just make it consistent? You're giving off. We are considered town employees. Correct. You're we're we're, we're uh, elected officials. A, as far as the labor board, everybody is. We are not employees. No, we're not no, employees. You're not official. But I, I'm not an employee. No. no. So I'm not subject to any employee the laws. Department of Labor That's will represent you. So I'm not. Oh, that was a whole new light in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Department of Labor will oh, represent all right. you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm hard to deal with that. And that was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was re reconfirmed with right. audit this oh, That's fine. I, I knew we were having some kind of audit. Okay, I was misunderstood by that. Yeah. So, you know, whatever you want, I could stub my nose at you. But I was just thinking... Just keep it the same as a regular employee. He's <laughs> just that would be give them option. a one percent. <laughs> and just to keep everything consistent, because now, again, you you did talk about the insurance policy and changing that, and it's like, well, we can do it this year, and then next year we can do it. Another gang of selectmen come in, and they want to change it. Correct. I'm can thinking it, if it's something, I I would think. Can I just my opinion? Just steady and even, and mm -hmm. not over here and over there. That Warren article for the election. Right. is still in one budget line item that I will have to make adjustment entries in December because there's such a minuscule amount that to split that back up and move it into the other lines within the account numbers is an accounting uh, challenge. challenge. And so... So it'll be easier for you not to do any raise or... Yeah. Either include <laughs> yeah. all together or no raise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's easier if I, if I have one. Like if it's road agent, I know this... Six hundred dollars or a thousand dollars for the road agent. I just add it to that line. But when I'm adding all these different pieces, granted, la the, the the combination of we're not supposed to care if it's a nightmare. Or okay. Well, the thing is, one option we could do is just <laughs> for but this issue. It also includes um, Social Security, Medicare, and that's those are the little pieces that I have to check on my other side of things to make sure that if you're giving two percent to the payroll or the pay increase. There's another piece that gets affected. Okay. Chief had a couple of them. Why don't you just create a pay scale that, that includes all the different, like, like we have now for, uh, for some of the hourly employees, that include all those positions, and when you do a 2% or a 1% or a 120% increase or decrease, you just adjust everybody, the whole scale, up and down the scale. It just just as a matter is a matter that's of what we did, that's, yeah. what we that's what we do. normally do. Yes, yeah. but te technically, the legislative body is responsible for setting the pay raises for elected officials. The board of selectmen are in the past have been uh, out on a limb, uh, give, just given here yeah. here the huge pay raises. Yeah. It is really not within our purview. They have a warrant article that says two percent pay raise. Well, we could do that, life. or we could recommend for this year we forego it and say we could do it every other year. Uh, the department of uh, DRA won't let us do just a flat two percent. I have to put a number in there, so I have to do some calculations for every if, individual. Right. So oh, I'll wow, take I'll take the two percent yeah. uh, for each individual, okay. and I'll look at that two percent with the uh, Medicare yeah. and oh, other yeah. things yeah. and retirement. So I have to have another little yeah. piece of that yeah. that gets added to that warrant article total. So, right, because they're not hourly employees. So right. they are a certain <laughs> amount and. Just, and the other thing too is sometimes we have department people that come up to us and ask us if they can get a raise, you know, and that makes it right last year when you said I'm not the one that got singled out. So I understand what you guys are saying, it makes sense that you were elected at that rate. The only problem I see is if if you're doing this job for three years, you're elected for three years, and the first year you're in, 
you, there's a 3% cost of living increase, and then next year there could be a 2% cost of living increase. Well, that they're not getting, I'm just saying the cost of living right. increase is uh, by 3%. Two, and then, there it go, then the next third year it goes up again, and they're, ma they're maintaining the same pay rate. Okay. You know? I, I hear you. So I, I, it's a quagmire because it, it's difficult to kind of like. Uh, it's navigate. easier to do That's this exactly. than to change the hourly rate for each one of these <coughs> people yeah. all the time. So it's better just to do this and not play with their hourly rates every time. Okay. So I'm in, I'm in I'm in favor of just leaving it across the board like we did last year. We can make it the same Warren articles we did. Let the voters chime but in. Then she has to calculate every She's individual. She's got to go through everything. I understood. She has, I understood. That's great. <laughs> You just plug your numbers in the computer. Yeah, you can we're do not that. 0.7%. You complained about it not being a full percentage last it's year. It's still a lot of work. It is. Um, yeah, but you have nothing because it's to such do. a small warrant, everybody says yes. And it's like it could have been. So we've looked at this through and gotten legal interpretation. When you present the budget, you can say that we have offered all of our, two, our employees 2% and we opted as a board to cover that 2% and extend it to all of our, uh, so the increase for payroll is 18,232. Right. Yeah, so we can do it as a, budget, not a do it as a budget item. Right, you can present it that way. That's what the uh, whole. Yeah, that makes sense. And then we're just, yeah, that's how right. you present it. Okay, that's it. Nice. It's just a bad idea. Right. And some of the other last year. It happens a lot. And if you really want to know approximately, you can identify that last year we tried taking this and putting it aside, which you all voted for. Okay. 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 Um, I'd like to make a motion to ease that we advance all pay, the pay raises into the budget. You know, explain what's part of the budget. For employees? Employees and yeah. like Okay. And I'll second that. I'll eat Well, in favor. Uh, I we know you guys don't do it for the money, you do it for the power. <laughs> <laughs> little bull. <laughs> we got to wrap this hey, up. I, I, know, I, know. I tried to take the money away from us. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get a second. <laughs> All right, going back to the agenda now. All okay. right. Okay, done, done. Oh, my God. I'm doing the mailbox now. Uh, I'd like to go small right. business first. It's an hour fast. <laughs> um, if you recall, last, minute, uh, last board meeting, Dave, um, we were discussing Kelsey Road uh, as far as winter maintenance. Yep. So with regard to the discussion of snow removal at Kelsey Road, the last meeting, we, uh, when I say we, Bob, myself, uh, had a meeting with legal counsel earlier today. And I'm going to say that the town of Dunbarton will support the decision of the Superior Court that the portion of Kelsey Road running between Mr. Guiney's house and the barn be public by prescription. The town of, Barton, of Dunbarton will maintain the newly declared public portion of Kelsey Road and will utilize the turnaround adjacent to the Guiney's barn during snow removal. Adjacent, that means in front of it? Where it's been used in the past, yes. Okay, do you understand that? Oh, I, oh, I understand it. Okay. I'm not if, the one that's if there's a, if business. There's a, if there's a problem with that, if there's a problem with using that Turn around for whatever reason, you will bring it to the board of selectmen's attention. Yeah. We will take, we will document the appropriate, appropriate, and take appropriate legal, legal action if needed. I do not want you to get in a confrontation. Oh, no, no, no. But are you, is somebody going to relay this message to Mr. Guiney? The court has already has. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's why you removed the post, I think. Now, um, oh, okay, that's fine. I just, <clears throat> whatever. Okay. It's all good. By the things I, I just yeah. yeah no that's fine okay I understand okay now that being said there are two posts left out at the end I'm not sure yeah, they'll have to those left to come out and that brush over on the right is coming way out into your corner too David the uh, there were some other things discussed uh, they're in the they're in the minutes that are being prepared they'll be available to you it was done in non-public but they'll be uh, released to the public in 72 hours the minutes will be ready next week okay. if you want to review them. There were some other issues that were discussed, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. That answers the question I had. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the mailbox now. Okay. Chief, do you think that that's something that you should relay to your officers to just so they know where we're going to maintain? 
They might get some. Just they might get some of his signs. I'll yeah. put them up. You, you maintain them. <laughs> We're a team, Joe. Yeah. We're a team. I put up the speed limit signs. He enforces them. There might be some middle of the night calls during whatever plowing or whatever. So just so you guys know about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll look for the for the written form out of it, and then I'll pass that okay. on. Yeah, so so yeah. we'll pass. No, I just want to make sure, sure I understand it. The minutes? minutes? No, just that notice. It. Sure. Right. Sure. Okay, um, I'm going through the mailbox now. I have a vacation request. I approved it uh, for one of our town, the town administrator. Any restrictions, gentlemen? You're all sorry. No. No. Okay. Continuing on, um, we have uh, we had an audit by the uh, labor department. There are a few things um, that were. Uh, they're pending. Could you report on that to us next week? I will. As soon as I get the report, I'll be. It'll be outlined, and I'll go over it with the board. Okay, Jeff. I'm glad you stayed around. I understand you have a copy of another culvert issue. That's the one you read earlier. Long Pond Road. Oh, the gap. The, yeah, it's not a culvert. It's the front of her driveway. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, it's the front of her driveway. Okay. No issue with dealing with that. Well, yeah, we're gonna put some when they pave. The parking lot at the school, we're going to put some asphalt okay. in and Excellent. repair it. Yeah. it the, the issue was rectified a number of years ago, and then some new people bought the property, and they did a lot of work to enhance their property. Sure. And the edge of the right-of-way caused the water not to be able to get into a culvert and run down the road and into these people's property. And so when I talked to the guy about it, they I gave him a choice. Either I would come down and do it, or they could do it. And I didn't think they wanted me to do it. And so they did it. It might, we're trying to see if it's going to be satisfactory. Mm -hmm. okay. But I guess there was an issue with a culvert under the driveway and they repaired that themselves. So it's all good as far as I know. So okay. far. And the last time it rained, everything was working correctly. Okay. We've had enough rain to try things too. <laughs> I would think so, yes. Can I, I tell you what, we'll have one more time trying tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. As long as it's not icy and white, that's fine with me. Help me out this check from Yankee Telecom. Oh, that's a standard um, local box um, revenue that we had gone into a uh, contract with with GSI, and that's just the income. I just want to see if anyone else is paying it besides myself. Uh, not too much. <laughs> not too many. <laughs> I guess not. Huh? Okay. That's a report. Uh, we got a packet of uh, letters in support of the uh, of the um, new uh, breakfast the restaurant area that's going to be adjacent to this building here. Um, I have uh, I, I love these letters of support. I have no problems with them. But uh, for the record, the uh, that application has to go through appropriate zoning review and plan board review before it becomes a blessed. And I'm just glad the town's in favor of it. But we don't do it by mob rule. We do it by appropriate. Um, Boards of uh, zoning, boards of uh, uh, planning, and then uh, they have to meet the, uh, in the state for any eating facility. So uh, it's under the process. So I'm glad we got those. I'm glad the uh, town's in favor of it. It's just a FYI, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Chief. I'm glad uh, the pages we have public notice uh, concerning the uh, the traffic study, and the the whole purpose of the public notice. Uh, I, I need your input there because I know how you feel about one page corner. Yes. Yeah, we're just working on Actually, we did some uh, little traffic work today down there. And okay. We will have some prepared. Yeah, and I know how you feel. And I think it's, I, I think me and you are on the same page. Opposite what the DOT recommended uh, concerning stop signs. So be prepared with your, I want to, this is an opportunity for public to get their input to us before we give our recommendation from the D2, from Dunbarton to the DOD. And I appreciate you guys taking the lead on that. Okay. Uh, this is just an FYI portal. Um, it goes to you. Link. I signed it already. Oh, you did? Good. Thank you. Okay. And talk to me about the siding. We have a. Um, oh, um, Dave Nolt asked for the. A remaining budget of the general government buildings. Yes. And that's attached. Um, siding should be started here shortly. I think Dave was wanted to take a look at that just to get an, um, an idea of what remained in the budget so that we can tackle other projects. 
So we have about $12,000 left? No, 22, isn't it? Who's say 22? 20, remaining? 24. 24. Less a couple of little incidentals. Right. So, in other words, we, could, we were concerned about having the, the safety center on the other side taken care of. Right. How come we're only doing the west and the east side? Is there's nothing on the south side or the north side? Those the, sides are uh, The south side is the, the garage, uh, the fire department doors. Isn't these it? sides were damaged because of the ice sliding off the roof over the years. Oh, so the other side looks okay? Um, one back side was actually done earlier this summer. Oh, of the, okay. Can we, uh, since he really just beginning on this table, I'd like to recommend that we hold off and award any more contracts for the second side. I'm more concerned about the roof leak. I want to have money to tackle the roof leak. And that quote we'll have in place to discuss next Thursday, I hope. Okay. I'd like to reserve the money for the roof leak. I think that's more important than that. I don't think that the roof leak should not be a huge amount of money. It's more labor intense than <clears throat> true. Okay. Bob, would you concur with that? Sure. Okay. Well, I think we, we should be able to hit both. Yeah, so we'll good. Table that but just, just until next week, so we, I just want to... Yeah, he's not starting until the first week. James, we get, we get time. What we, what we want to do is encumber the money if we have to for that siding. Right. We're, making you, we're making your office look pretty, Chief. Okay. I can't guarantee the painting. That's going to be looks like next spring. <clears throat> okay. Um... I'm out of inbox stuff. You spread it out. Well, I wanted to. There aren't any letters of support there, that's for sure. That, that's great. I have no oh, problem with that. Uh oh, Bob Martell. Sign that, please, Bob. Uh, there's a couple of issues I'd like to talk in non public on transfer station. Um, uh, I'll leave it employees. If we could do that afterwards, I'd like to call it non public afterwards. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open up public comment again. Chief, I'll start with you. Mrs. Chief. <laughs> Chief that. Is, is, is. I've got a little thing. It's not really public comment. It's, it's uh, the alarm system in our highway garage. Yes. As you know, we had that smoke heat detector. Not smoke, but heat detector. Sure, the, put the in, new one. Put in in all that kind of stuff. It's all in and up, up and running. We had a couple of issues with it. Alarms going off. Signaling. They weren't going, calling the police, uh, fire department or anybody here. There wasn't a a threat to the building. And one of them was uh, something to do with the wiring and the guy all started and stalled and rectified it. But then we've had another one coming off and since then it's been brought to my attention through him that that needs to have a dedicated phone line for it. Okay. And as I told him, that was the first I'd heard of it. Yeah, but it's good to, to call out to reach somebody. Dedicated just for that alarm. Okay. Right now, it's my understanding that they, they put a jumper wire to our phone line, existing 774-7097 mm -hmm. phone line. And he's <coughs> saying that's what's causing the alarm to activate. It doesn't activate and go, as far as I know, it doesn't, maybe it does go to the, the monitoring company okay. and they read it and understand it isn't a, a fire issue, so they don't alert the next level, but we have to clear it and correct it. It's a pain in the butt, and I've been on the phone with him several times, and I talked to Lee, and Lee dug up the contract, because he was adamant that he had told the town that it was on the contract. And it was in the contract. I'm a little disappointed that the guy, all he cared about was doing was getting the job. Because obviously, I would have thought he would have said, hey, listen, this isn't going to work correctly unless you do this, and try to, because he's has a relationship with the library, and I guess that same issue was happening at the library. It's the same guy I met that monitors ours. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got. He seems like he likes the sales end of it more than <laughs> exactly. And, and that's yeah. fine. I. But I was a little disappointed in that because I'm thinking, well, why wasn't this talked about Early so on. we could make preparations? I went to the phone company to find out what another line will cost. It'll cost forty dollars and change a month. So quick numbers: five hundred dollars a year. For that, just that line. I mean, that's that's what they charge for a basic line. Yeah, for a commercial, residential, commercial. It's, we would consider commercial. commercial. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, if if they want if they want to say residential, he's talking thirty something. But basically, it would be five hundred dollars a year. I've talked talked to John Wigan about it. John told me that well, yeah, technically it's code, but 
No, but it, it's it's we want to preserve your trucks from being burned well, up. Well, no, I, I my biggest concern was the system is going to work correctly. Well, why did we put it in if it's not going to work? Exactly, that was my big fear, and I've been told by John, by the alarm guy, and everything that we don't have anything to worry about. It's going to work correctly, but. Okay. My thing are. is, Jeff, what, do, what do we do? We just keep ignoring the alarm. My thing is, I think you should get the second line and put it in. Yeah. But don't add it to your budget. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to give it to? It comes, out, it comes out of my budget. I no, but I, that's what I mean. Is that something I know? Was budget times come yeah. up and we're yeah. having this discussion? Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate. Like I said, that. But it had to come to a head to find all right. this information. I mean, we will just tell it in the I am too, because, to because it, it, receipt, yeah, he so. put it in writing to cover his butt, and you know how contracts are. But I would have thought he would have really had that discussion. That, or remind us that, that this hey, isn't going to, you're going to have issues yeah. like you're having at the library unless you put this on the line. I think this, that guy. He thinks we all know more about alarms than we actually do. He it's very possible. possible. He thinks we understand that it needs yeah. another line yeah. or something yeah. for yeah. some reason. Yeah. And I, it kind of goes right over his head if you talk to him about oh, it, too. Oh, my gosh. Well, he puts you down here well, because I, he knows more. Unfortunately, I, him and I have, down, at this point, I have a really good rapport. So we should have Lane take him. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please <laughs> not. Um, no, I, it, it's I not think an I, issue of taking care of it. It's, do you think that's what we want to do? I mean, I... I was trying to get John to say we've got to do it, but he did mention that we probably should do it. And obviously, he didn't stick around. To me, it, it falls into the category of no brainer. I mean, it's a fire yeah. safety thing. We've got to yeah. do the right yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. like I said, I've been assured by all these people that it works correctly. When did, with the separate line? No. No, right now. Right now. It'll right. override our phone line. It's just right. like a, fa a shared fax line with yeah. the phone. Right. It'll do. But both what's causing the false alarms? Well, that's what I I can't get that out of it. I think probably if you get a call in or there's a yeah, but because you have a machine on there, right? Yeah, that's the only thing we have on us, the machine. We have no other. I mean, the only odd part to this was it was put in in August, and this calm alert alarm never went off until the day before yesterday when they were repairing the wiring issue that they had. That's the first time it went off. And then the next morning it was going off. No. So there's, there's Tell a little. Who they is that fixed the wiring? Ernie gagged and wired it for him. It does electric work. Sure. So it down for him. And they took responsibility for that and came and, I believe, straightened that out. And that was just, a, it was it come up as a code ground fault, and the alarm is an audible alarm in the building. Sure. And you just push a silence alarm, and you have to open the panel box up. It's a locked panel box. They tell you they don't want you going in there messing around, but they say it's all right to do that. So we do that, but anyway. Do we want to move toward getting the line, putting it in there, and all right. saying, my, all right. My, my feeling is yep. we comply with the uh, second telephone line. Yep. If we still continue to have problems, I'm ready. Well, yeah, that's that's a whole different yeah. I'm ready to can this guy and consider on other companies. But like I said, if he says that's what we need, I, I'm going to get him to work. And, and maybe that will resolve the problem. Right. And then I have no problem with it. <laughs> okay. But if it, if it doesn't solve the problem, I think well, we can, yeah, well, yeah, well, he's been... As I said, exactly. it's been difficult to work with. I, there are other companies yes. out there who do this. And at this point, it's it's become a monitor, monitoring monitoring issue because another company can monitor. Right? Mm -hmm. Correct. This is just the installation. The install. And yeah. it, again, I mean, it's going to be five hundred dollars a year right. for that but one. But the building. thing is, we have a warranty on the install for how long? It should be a year. I don't right. Yeah, which, uh, but if he demands that, he says it's going to work. Let's put the line in and make sure it works under the exactly. first year. Exactly. Yeah. That's so, all I want to do. Yeah. So. Just call Dunbar and Telephone. And yeah. They, I don't do think you, is that something you want me to call? Them you got a blessing. Right. Okay. So to you or me? No, I'll, I'll get a hold of you. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. You got to figure all okay. raises. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be, nice. Be, be nice. Be <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know. And I'll put that. Um, Chief, do you have a comment? Just curious. We got a, a car failure alarm last weekend too. The only one we didn't have. It came yeah. Last weekend. Uh, Never had one before. Haven't had one since. There was a lot of power outages last week. A lot of yeah. flickering. Yeah, a lot of. I just wonder if there's some kind of correlation. Well, he, his this was on Monday. He said when they were there working on it, it went off. Because we have a shit, we have a shit phone line. We don't have a dedicated one. Yeah. And backing up a step, I don't know what. We may have a different system than you. It's an alarm system, but ours is heat-related. Heat yeah. okay. 
and I don't know what you know. I don't know enough about it. Like Dave said, he thinks we know all this stuff about it. What it requires. And he assumes we we know it. We read that it needs a new yeah. line, and we have and one. So, and I think is yours burger <coughs> drinking line yeah, too. Burger, and then they tied you. into the fire on the fire side with tied into John's yeah. line. Because see, that was my first. when he was installing that. He should have said, "Hey." Jeff, if we we can put this on this line, it's going to work, but you're going to have issues with it. Yeah. Well, and he should have told you that right cool, up front cool of what he should have told performance. Yeah. That, that ended up being my fault because I wasn't involved in the process. But I did say, John's the fire chief. He's the one that knows all about the fire stuff. Why? I don't know what to think about. But anyway, in the story, on, on, on a corollary, a line. On a corollary, you know, mean the, uh, does he control the entry to the doors here? The punch cold? Yeah. No, that's different. Okay, the punch cold by by your side does not work. It's the battery that get runs down every two months, so okay. we have to replace the battery. But well, anyway, that was that was a couple of days ago. It wasn't over the weekend. Oh, okay. okay. And then two days yesterday, it was going off. I it, guess. It sure it's, it's sounded the same. Uh, it yeah, yeah calm, sure call it two or something. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's something to do with it. And I went to the telephone company. To get okay, educated. Jeff. You got yep. a blessing. Go yep. forth, make it happen, yep. and just make sure it works before the one year's out. Exactly. That's what I want to do. Right. Thank you. See if that solves our problem. Yep. And you understood, uh, Mudge. Uh, I, you kind of talking to the two, two chiefs. Well, I think oh. it's Liam pointed out something to me that you may want to uh, near your end if you have a budget uh, dollars left, you may want to buy extra salt and sand. Oh yeah, we've done that in the past. And last year, I got kind of messed up because in the past we we taken it out of the bill. Even though it was 2000, let's say 2018, yeah. and the bill arrived in 2019, we were taking out of 2019 money. But the accountants, I guess, got after us, right? Yeah, I think it's the delivery of it. Got, you ordered it like the 28th or 29th. They well, delivered no, it, it any, time, any time during that month because right. they sent the invoice. At the end of the month. And we don't, and yeah. we don't have to pay yeah. it immediately that day. Yeah. No, just so there was it. something to do with it. We had to back it up. So anyway, I went over because we had to back it up. Yeah. So I learned my lesson on it. But that was the yeah. first year that had ever happened because right. before we were just... Yeah. We just hold the bill and pay it the next year. Yeah. Oh, so right. you could get the invoice and, and just get it. Yeah, just let me know you ordered oh. salt. Well, I can do it. I can do it a week ahead of time. That's two fine. weeks ahead of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's perfect. I mean, like you said, the only issue we're going to have is, and this is probably splitting hairs, but we have a snowstorm on the 29th. That's cause emergency. Okay. That falls. But you, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's, no, that's no, no, no. But the thing is, I, I make provision for emergency spending. But other than that, okay. everything else is. But what he's getting at is, it may put him over his budget. No. So if you backed up the, if we had to say, all right, you know, these guys plowed on the 29th and this is, they you gave the invoice on the 3rd of January, but one of the days was the 29th. Uh, I think it's, we're here to make sure it'll work. operate. It'll, it'll work. work. Okay. Yeah, no, I understand that. Okay. I didn't, last year I was unaware of that. Was it, you think the uh, guidance we, here was clear enough for you tonight? Oh yeah, yeah, no, but Lena uh, educated me last year. Okay, I, good. I listened to her. When she told me, I, we I try. We sometimes listen to her. Yeah. <coughs> All right, no, I'm good with it. No, okay, good. It. Thank you for coming in tonight. All right, thank you. I'll get out of here. Then. I don't keep this move, me moving. Yeah, thank fine. you, Jeff. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Leo, public comment. Yep. Be the last person. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. You've got a lot of real business to deal with. So. Hey, you're everyone's real. I am um, just curious about your scheduling for the um, town pond. We were that's that's on the agenda. We're going to talk about that. So I was going to bring back the board. That was one thing Dave okay. was going to talk about. Right, because it is cold enough now. Right. In fact, uh, the owner of the adjacent property actually uh, talked to me at the town meeting. Oh, right. And uh, I said uh, we're going to talk about it. Try probably get a date. Uh, Penciled it. I had planned on meeting with my nephews to try and get a little bit of a harder date and then <coughs> do it fairly soon. And now that I've gotten that deer, we should be able to just going to say, that. Yes, <laughs> you got it. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. So, um, look, they both have um, newborn babies, basically. So let me just touch base with them, and I'll come back next, next week. week. What is it? Do well for next week? Uh, compound maintenance. Okay, so I'll add it. <clears throat> yeah. If we Oh, Jeff. I want to ask Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, one more thing. Should have left. Excuse me. The town truck. If we have debris, like branch debris from the town pound, can we just stack it up and you can be picked up by the town at your convenience? Oh, well, we can actually chip it right into it. Mm. How, how could you support us on that? We're going to be taking down a bunch of little trees and brush around the town pound. How can you help us? Try to walk the I'm sorry? Drag them off the list. <laughs> hey, can no, we throw them over the fence? <laughs> no, that's a possibility. No, I Burn mean, them inside how, the how much burn pit you got right there. Yeah. yeah. How, how much are you talking about? Less than a dump truck full. When are you doing it? 
in the next three weeks. We're going to do it on the weekends. We're going to have the hogs reads do it. What we've done, we did this once in, in mm -hmm. the past for an organization. Yep. We supplied the chipper, and I came with it. Okay. Being the town guy with the truck, and I would do that again. And even, so even if you have, couldn't, Peter so just, could maybe come too. Well, it'd be on a weekend or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't want half a, less than half a I'll, day. I'll come do it. Okay. I'll, but we don't just want to take and leave the chipper there. No, for the general public to use. Absolutely. We need someone qualified in yeah. being the road agent and yeah, right. quasi, I guess some depends what the job is. I'm a town employee some days, some days I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean for the insurance purposes and yes. all that. Just let me know what it is and that's what we'll do. Okay. We'll give you enough notice so you, we don't do it the day yeah. before. No, that's fine. But <laughs> we'll pick we'll work with you on it and I'll and I'll come do it myself. I just know we can. Then the town gets the use of it. I think you put it. We, we when we chipped it, we chipped it just uh, chipped in the pile there. I believe. Yeah, I thought it was. I can't remember. I think we just it. Like, like, whatever. Yeah, I think can, the garden club was trying to get rid of it after people had taken. Yeah, we can do whatever you want. If you want to chip it or just blow it in the back of the truck? I mean, it's not. It doesn't sound like a lot. Anyway. Nah. No, it's no, whatever. We, we can make right that decision that day. On the spot. Yeah, we have drive to drive fast down the street and just blow it up. <laughs> we have to tow it. We have to dam. Make sure the burn pit's open. He can put it in the pile. Oh, the we, uh, <laughs> make sure the burn pit's open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I didn't mean to call you back. Oh, that's that will work. Just let me know when you want to do it. And, and Chief, since I got you here, could I ask one more favor? Sure. I've had many, numerous complaints of uh, the speed limit being too low on going down Mills Hill. Can we, can we change it? Too low? <laughs> yeah. But that's, yeah. That's a state road, so but could no. you uh, yeah. could you could you find out for us? Okay, if, can, can you that, make the change? Yes, yeah. that was reduced a few, just a few years ago. Yeah, Jeff Nelson prior, and I don't think it went to the state level. I think it was done at the town level to bring it down to forty from fifty. Yeah, it's almost impossible to go down that hill. And maintain forty-five. Oh, I do want to. I do it all the time. Too. That's the way I go down. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. You know, my truck has one of them. Uh, Engine brakes on it, and even yeah. with that on, and I do it all the time. Hitting that brake, you do. I have to make the turn. Oh, you go <laughs> the other way. Okay, uh, just for not, not on a priority. I know what the process is. Yes, that's all. Okay. And so not a priority, and I don't. I had a few citizen complaints, or concerns. Well, what you'll do is you'll eliminate those citizens' complaints and create a whole bunch of new ones. Yep. For all the speed yeah. at the bottom of the hill, because yep. I get I got to deal with that too. I know. So yeah. we'll we'll, we'll okay. listen to your best recommendation. We're picking them up out of the ditch too, right? We're picking them out of the ditch too. Well, that happened. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. No, no big deal. Okay, gentlemen, I am going to uh, uh, close public comment. Uh, but I'd like to go into non-public meeting for our yes, ma'am. I'm not done yet. Yeah, don't. Well, we're not done with the public meeting either. Oh, I thought you just said we were going to close. Yeah, you said I'm going to close. Yeah, he did. No, I'm going to close the public comment. Oh. Yeah, but you said. No, okay. I'm going to go. You started going down the wrong path. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bring it back to the board. I will bring it back to the board. And before, I used to like to have the selectman comments in the, at the very end of the meeting. Oh, okay. When you open back up. But I'm going to open it up now. I'll, I'll bring it to Dave first. No, we just talked about the only comment I could Bob, to you. But, you know, I just want to make an observation that the election went well with the volunteers that we have that serve in those. And when it came time for counting, we got 32 or 34 people that showed up to count ballots. Mm -hmm. So it, we had a chance to get out of there. A lot earlier, and I've gotten out of some of the. Yeah. I also that, heard in the office that the turnout at 7 a.m. was really good. A lot of people were very happy. Over 50 some odd people. Yeah. I'd say closer to 80, 90. No, actually, sure. you know, but there was over 200 by 8 o'clock. By 7 o'clock? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep, yeah. over, over 200. So the turnout was good, but uh, it just said, you know, in, People that do, that do watch this, I want them to know that, you know, even though we're struggling to get volunteers at time, mm -hmm. it certainly went well on on Tuesday night, and we got out of there. It was early enough to get home before eleven. Mm -hmm. I know we all look pretty tired. You know? when we get home, I can tell <laughs> yeah, you that. Yeah. I think I get home around eleven. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Bob. I did get a comment from uh, Fred Mullen, and said that this select board has spent the most time at the polls of any select board he's ever seen. 
Normally he said they'd show up in the morning, they'd leave all day, and they'd come back and just sign the paperwork late at night. Mm. He said this select group has put a lot of time in. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good way for us to exposure to citizens, and we hear all sorts of issues such as Mills Hill and other issues. Mm -hmm. uh, Town Pound, I mean, the, uh, the, the bladder came and wanted to get it going. Mm -hmm. You even hear of elected officials that want to hefty raise. <laughs> okay, uh, it's to Bob. Anything else? That's about it. Okay, it's to me. Uh, I concur. I just want to say diddle on what Bob said. Uh, I thought it was a. There was a lot of teamwork down there, and uh, so I was glad it was. Uh, it was a smooth evening. Even Randy said it was one of the best election. One of his better elections, because uh, I think it was because there was no snow. Yeah. Okay. Now I think is um, we can move into non-public if we so desire, gentlemen. No. She may have some. <laughs> Boy, you keep on his you know, listen to you. You've got to go in public comment. You can't be selectman comment. Okay, now I open up for the town administrator. Can I you? should be in public comment. <laughs> Can you open? No. I have just a few things okay, if, uh, to, to bring to the board. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve hours. It's been brought to my attention that the town clerk's office is closing at 2 p.m. That's Wednesday um, in two weeks. Wednesday the 21st. Um, some of our um, employees have also brought up possibly changing the hours. Um, I don't have an issue if we wanted to close the office at 2 p.m. Do you guys have a problem with that? What about the transfer station? I want to be fair to all our employees. Are they open Wednesday? Yeah. I have asked him. He said there would be no changes to the hours there. Um, if, we close, if the board closes the town office hours, then the employees staff should be paid for those two hours that we close early. Um, but is it fair to uh, allow the admin people to go home and they have to transfer people going home and not on a regular time? I think we got to be fair here, gentlemen. I mean, I, this, either we did, we could demand that tra transfer station close two hours early at six instead of eight. We could do that. Well, I think it's, I think it, uh, you know, a lot of people come down there. We're only open yeah. limited hours down there, so a lot of people, I know it ends up on the wrong day this year. Yeah. But might, it's, might throw them off on Saturday, too. Yeah, maybe, so I'm know. thinking we better They end up paying for it Saturday time. by working twice as hard, you know. There were already limited people down there yeah, working you know, hard enough. So. Thinking about it, you got to remember, too, is he's got a very, very short staff now. Right, yeah. you can't be slammed on a long no. Saturday morning for I, I know, so yeah. every, I think that, you know, I'd like to give the guys a couple hours, but mm -hmm. it makes it really difficult because I read this email, mm -hmm. and when I went mm -hmm. yesterday, one guy was on a break, so there's one guy working a window, mm -hmm. and... Brad was over at the compactor, and they, you know, they, they, they were getting, you know, the stuff was piled up. Yeah. So I mean, can you imagine they get done early? I don't believe there's been any request or say that they want to close early, but um, there is part of the office can be closing at two o'clock. Um, I'd like to be able to offer that to the other girls. I, you know, you don't have a problem with the office. Yeah. All right, but you know, I think the transfer station, you know, as as Lee mentioned, you know, you're gonna close early Saturday morning. There's gonna be a lot of people here. Yeah. They're gonna go on. They just work harder Saturday. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I think we have a consensus. And pay the girls for the t the two yeah. hours. Okay. All right, and then that brings us to Monday, December twenty fourth, Christmas Eve, and Monday, December thirtieth, New Year's Eve. Um, I don't those are both on a Monday? Those are Monday, and we will not be closing um, because we have payroll to process, but um, it, will there be an issue with... You're talking the 2 p.m. thing on those two dates, too? Yeah, yeah. And the transfer station gets a two date, two hours? Oh, they're not place. open on Mondays, so they wouldn't, it wouldn't affect them. I would, Tom I'd be, Clark would like to be <coughs> consistent with ours, so she's going to put that in her notice for the December renewal. You want to do one or two? You want to do both or you want to do just one? <clears throat> I would think Christmas would be the more important of the two myself. But. Most, of, most of the government, like the state, will probably close at noontime. A lot of times we'll get email blasts that they'll be closing. 
Yeah, there's nothing um, that would be going tech on support that will be. Anyway. Yeah. I don't. I don't have any issue really. Well, no, not unless it screws up your payroll. No, that would be because that good. has to come out on time. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're talking two p.m. Like, two p.m. on Christmas Eve. Two. What? Two. We're talking about two hours earlier. Some people, and that's that's reasonable. It's, I think the noon <coughs> time would be good too, but two p.m. is more, I think, uh, reasonable. Okay. So is that for both holidays? Yes. Or? Okay. <clears throat> okay. What else? We will announce that. And I think that was it. Everything else? So that was it. And then uh, we're going to the, we're gonna get the stuff next week. Okay. One second. For the dollars. Oh, one more, one more thing. Um, again, I met with Twin Metal Roofing. They're going to have a quote for us next week. Right. Um, I'd like the board to take some time to go inspect the transfer station painting job. Because I did it, already when I was there. When was that? Because he was there yesterday to finish Thank up. You. Yeah. Uh, he, what was your impression? I think it was fine other than the couple of spots and he said he was going to fix them up. And you it. see it in the email, all the work that they did. They re-added another coat to the area where that board was. They plugged all the knot holes that were open, uh, replaced some rot over the uh, gutter and then painted and that paint corner section. Yet, right? No, that's why I'm, this is holding up. I'm going to be a little busy. If you want to go down, Mike or Bob, and take a look at it, I'm fine with whatever you guys see. Okay. All right. And, and then if you report back that I can pay the bill, then yep. we'll process that next week. I'm good with that. I don't think I'll be back down by there. So. Okay. We'll make it a public meeting. Me and Bob will go down there. And we'll, we'll, uh, Why don't you guys we'll go with coffee tomorrow? I'm afraid that. What's that? Go after coffee tomorrow. Oh, they're closed on Friday. It's closed on Friday. Unless they yeah, walk you know what, though? We can go in. Yeah. You can walk around the gate. We can go in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be right. meeting tomorrow anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I, you know, the, from what I saw, it wasn't that bad, <clears throat> and what he had to do. So yeah, it's, not a, it's not a though. historical building, yeah. I'd say. It's a transfer um, station shack. Again, back to this, I touched on this just briefly. The uh, calendar that I provided for the board. Yeah, the, 2018, that. you see the boxes around the dates of your meetings. Mm -hmm. I'll be sending out my memos to departments with their worksheets to schedule a meeting. I'd like to try to get them in as close to the end of the, the 2018 year and not carry it too far into January. Um, and then there's a quick summary at the top that tells you the dates. Uh, this is in detail, but quick <clears throat> reference. I have a lot of deadlines. Um, public hearings, notice in the paper, um, town report due from um, departments. So there's a, a lot of things that I'll be pushing to keep the board on track with. Um, Farmers Almanac says a big snowstorm on March 12th. Really? When, when you plan a public hearing, you've got to make sure that it's Ron Slocum will be available. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, because you guys have come to. I do. I always actually uh, reach out to him. Um, so there are a few things that we've learned over the years that, for example, um, when we have our public hearing, we don't have a public hearing until we pass the date of petition warrant articles, which is on Tuesday, um, February 5th. Because if someone proposes something with a dollar value, we have to have another public hearing. And the newspaper. A notice for seven days is a tricky thing. So by noticing a regular public hearing, a snow date public hearing, seven days later, you've covered yourself with noticing it in the paper with enough time, but you don't want to do it too early. So there's these things, whether you keep them in your basket to refer to, there are going to be a lot of important things that I'll be following okay. with. And then, um, veteran, um, I am going to be working next Monday, Veterans Day, so that I can work with the accountant and not be disturbed by a um, hundred people. And then I'll take that day as a floater at another time, just so the board knows, okay? Did you hear that, Mike? Yes. I'm working Monday, so I can get my work done. Um, I also have signed up for a training of the trustees of the trust funds. They have a... Um, a class going on next Thursday in Manchester put on by NHMA and it's 
to cover everything that they need to know about the selling representative. John Casey has signed right. up with me, so we'll be going together. And um, you t talked about the speed limit, and we talked about the credit card. And I'm going to work on trying to get um, the transfer station bathroom repaired, which has been on the radar, but we haven't been able to get that done. Well, I'm trying to get What's the matter with it? There's, it's raw uh, plywood on the ground. I remember I saw all that then. Yeah, and then, so, and then... The now we gave Woody permission to get that going. Yeah, but he hasn't found anybody to get it done, so I'm just going to try to reach out to somebody to get some quotes to do it. Okay. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Lee. I didn't mean to cut you off earlier. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Bob, as you know, always tell me not to ramble, so I have to go past him. That was a rambling. I know, this is the cutoff. <laughs> All right, uh, I'd like to close the public uh, uh, section of this meeting and consider it non public. Do we have a motion or non public? I'll second it. Oh, you want to go right there? I'll make a motion we go into non-public per our